Hello, we are going to have a look at differentiation for our IGCSE exam and do a couple of questions, see how to answer them and then give you a few questions to have a go at yourself. So first of all, what is this differentiation malarkey? Well, in terms of our exams for now, we can just think about this as for curves and if we want to know the gradient of a curve. Now, the gradient here is changing. Here we have a, a positive gradient coming up here, but as we move around, this gradient is obviously quite steep. If I draw the tangent on, here the gradient has got a bit more shallow, and then actually over the hill, we're starting to come down, so the gradient's going negative. So the gradient is constantly changing on a curve. It's constantly um, adjusting what it is. So we can't say what is the gradient of the curve and get an answer. We can say what is the gradient at a certain point. We can say what's the gradient at that point and what's the gradient at this point and what's the gradient at this point. And differentiation turns the equation, like this kind of thing, it turns the equation of the curve, which sort of draws the curve, and it changes that into an equation for the gradient. So we can calculate if we have this x value, we can put that into the uh, differentiated equation uh, and that will tell us not that value of y, but the value of the gradient at that point. So that's what we're trying to do. Basically, it's all about gradients of curves at this stage of the game. And doing the differentiation is actually really simple. It's just two steps. The first step is we multiply the front by the power. And the second step is we reduce the power by one. Those are the two steps. That's all we have to do, multiplication and then subtract one. So let's have a look. It's been quite nice because it's separated the two parts of this equation and sort of scaffolded, scaffolded it for us so we don't have to do it all in one go. So 4x squared, the first thing we do is we use the power and we multiply the front by the power. So the power is 2, 2 times 4 gives us an 8, and then we have our x, and the power now is reduced by 1, so x squared becomes x to the power of 1. But we don't need to write x to the power of 1, we would just write that as 8x, because we don't generally write powers of 1. What about this thing? Well, the problem with this is that this nice little trick only works for x to the power ofs, okay? And this is not written in that form because x is on the denominator. We can't do that. Likewise, we couldn't do square root of x. We have to rewrite these as x to the power of. So we could write this one as x to the half, and then we could do it. We could times the front by the power, a half x, and then reduce the power by 1 would be minus a half. But anyway, we're not doing that one, we're doing this one. So if it's on the denominator, this is the same as 27x to the minus 1, okay? Because it was the power of 1, and then when we bring it up from the denominator, we need a negative power. And we just do the same thing, we times the front by the power. 27 times minus 1 uh, goes to minus 27, and then just be careful here, because when we reduce the power by 1, it goes to minus 2. It gets more negative. Don't be tempted to go to 0. We're reducing, so it gets more negative. So here are the two differentiated expressions. And then part B puts it all together because it says, find the coordinates of the turning point of the equation. Well, what on earth does that mean? Well, let's look back at our general curve up here. There were two turning points here, this one just there, and this one here, okay, at the top of this mountain and at the bottom of this valley. And literally, the graph turns around. And the point about a, t the point about a turning point is that we know something special about it. We know for that instant, that very moment, I've drawn it very badly, that that very moment, the gradient is absolutely zero, as it just stops 
and turns around again. And same thing here, that gradient is zero. So whenever we see the phrase turning point or stationary point is another way of saying it, we know that the gradient is going to be zero. And in differentiation, the way we write the gradient is to say dy by dx. And this is kind of because um, this, is, this comes from how we calculate gradient normally. If we had a straight line, we make a little triangle and we do the rise divided by the run. We work out the gradient like that. Uh, a better way to write that is delta y over delta x. And the delta meaning the change in y value over the change in x value. Well, dy by dx is simply changing the delta into the letter d because that means an infinitely small change in y over an infinitely small change in x. This is basically saying the same as this, but this is a big change on this triangle. But when we go to a curve, we're sort of shrinking that down to a tiny dot on the curve. So it's just a tiny, tiny change in the y values over a tiny, tiny change in the x. But it's essentially the rise over the run again. So that is our gradient, okay? And if we differentiate this like we just have, uh, we would just do each bit separately. Well, we've already done those. We've done them. We've got them here. So dy by dx equals 8x minus 27x to the minus 2. And we've also been told to find the coordinates of the turning point of the equation. Well, the turning point, we know that that gradient is 0. So if that's the gradient and it equals this and that gradient equals 0, we can now just rearrange this for 0. Uh, for, yeah, to solve it when it equals 0. Rearrange it for x. So let's rewrite that slightly differently. It's 8x minus 27 over x squared, and that equals 0. Multiply by the x squared, we get 8x cubed minus 27 equals 0. So 8x cubed equals 27. x cubed equals 27 over 8. And then if we cube root both sides, we're going to get that x equals, well, the cube root of 27 is going to be 3, and the cube root of 8 is going to be 2. So x equals 3 over 2. But we want the coordinates. So we've got the x-coordinate. We also need the y-coordinate. And I've got an equation right here for the y-coordinate. So all I have to do is substitute this into this equation. And that's not too bad. We can literally just replace the x's substituted in. So it's y equals 4, 3 over 2 squared plus 27 divided by 3 over 2. That's a little clunky to write in. So uh, what I might do is when we type it into the calculator, write that as 27 times 3 over 2 to the minus 1, like we, uh, like we wrote it up here. Okay, so, I don't know how well you can see the screen there, but let's type that in. 3 over 2 squared, oh, squared plus 27 bracket fraction. 3 over 2, close the bracket to the power of minus 1. And it thinks about it, and the answer is 27. And so the coordinate, we may as well write it as a coordinate, is 3 over 2 and 27. Nice and straightforward. So that's where the turning point is. So if we had it on a graph at... One and a half there, at one and a half there, and 27 up, that's where the graph would either turn over as a mountain, or maybe it is a valley. We don't know, and in fact, that's what part C is asking. Is this turning point a maximum or a minimum? So a maximum is where we get a mountain, and a minimum is where we get a valley. So which is it? Well, there's a pretty easy way of finding out. If 
we come back to our differentiated uh, state, so dy by dx, if we take that thing and differentiate it again. So we get d2y by dx squared. It's just how we write it when we differentiate again. Twos go in those positions. Don't worry about y at the moment. It's just how we write it. Differentiate that again. Well, x, eight, um, x to the 1 times the front by 1. So 8 times 1 is just 8. And the reduce the power goes to 0. 1 take 1 is 0. And x to the 0 must be 1. So it's just going to be 8. That x disappears. Minus, now this is going to be slightly trickier. Um, minus 2 times minus 27. Well, actually, that's going to be plus. It's going to be plus 54x. And again, that reduces, so it's to the minus 3. So here's our second order differential. What we're going to do is we're going to put our value of x into this. And if the value that we get, if, if this equals a positive amount, then it's actually a minimum. And if we get a negative amount, it's a maximum. That feels like it's a little bit the wrong way around. You think a positive value should be the maximum, being bigger, but, uh, but you just have to remember that it is the wrong way around. So calculator again, 8 plus 54 bracket 3 over 2 to the power of minus 3 and what we get is we get positive 24 so this equals positive 24 the fact that it is a positive answer positive answer means it is a minimum and then we've answered the questions. It says give a reason for your answer. Well, I've done a calculation, and then I've written it in a, uh, a phrase to explain what my calculation means in terms of whether it's maximum or minimum. So there's quite a lot in that question. The next question actually is uh, a bit easier, because although the equation looks harder, we can just apply that rule. Find dy by dx. That simply equals times the front by the power, 2 times 3, 6. x reduce the power squared. Each one you can just do separately. They're completely separate expressions um, in the equation and we just differentiate each one separately. So we get um, 4 times 2, so we get 8x to the 1. Uh, that's x to the 1, so we just get minus 3. Anytime you get a linear term, you, you just get rid of the x and leave the number. And actually a constant is just going to disappear. We don't have that at all because it would be 7x to the naught is how we could write that as a power on the x. And when you times the front by naught, just the whole thing just disappears because anything times naught disappears. So that's it. Done. Find the gradient of the curve at x equals 7. Well, let's just substitute 7 instead of x. 6 times 7 squared plus 8 times 7 minus 3 and that will tell us what the gradient is. So let's just do that. 6 times 7 squared plus 8 times 7 minus 3, and we get 347. Done. Much easier than the first question. Not so much thinking required. OK, and the last question. Now, this is an interesting one because this is talking about displacement and velocity and acceleration. So just a quick explanation that if you have displacement, so sort of like how far you've gone, but as a vector, so this direction does count. It's not so much distance, but it's how far and in what direction. If you have that, and we call displacement S rather than D, it's S. We could go into Y, but that would take another video. So displacement, if that is some function of time, OK, whatever that might be, velocity is going to be the differential of this. OK, so if you differentiate this equation, you get the velocity. So that's dS by dt. And acceleration, because it's the rate of change of velocity, is going to be dV. Oh, 
just get the light back on, dv by dt. It's the rate of change of velocity. So if you differentiate velocity, you get acceleration. And of course, that was the differential of the displacement. So this is the second differential, just like we did for the turning points, the second differential of the displacement is the acceleration. So you need to know that relationship that you can go from displacement to velocity by differentiating and from velocity to acceleration by differentiating again. So now we know that, we can do this question really quite easily. Find an expression for the velocity, well, just differentiate it. So ds by dt, which is what v equals, equals 2 times 3 is 6, reduce the power, Minus 4t, well, this is just a linear term, so the t just disappears. Because remember, it's power of 1, so it's just minus 4. And the 5 is a constant. We always just lose the constants, they disappear, so we're done. v equals 6t squared minus 4. Find the acceleration of the particle at time 7 seconds. I presume that means t equals 7 seconds. Well, the acceleration, we need to differentiate it again, okay? We need the second differential. So here we've got the first differential, the velocity. So dv by dt, which is the acceleration, is going to be the differential of this times the front by the power. So we get 12, reduce the power by 1, we just get t. Constants disappear, there's, there's no t on it, so that whole thing just disappears, we just get 12t. Okay, and then the acceleration when it's at 7 seconds is just going to be, substitute that in. So it's just 12 uh, times 7. So what do we get there? 12 times 7, 84. Is that right? Now we probably ought to put some, it said meters per second here, so this must be meters per second squared. We ought to put our units on, I suppose. And that's our answer. Easy peasy. So... Having seen how to do those questions, uh, here are four questions that you can have a go at. You can press pause on the video and uh, have a go at those. And best of luck.